Hello and welcome to Microsoft Hates Greg. My name is Greg Deckler, and today we're going to be talking about the No Calculate Challenge Round 2 and how much of a genius Dax, just absolute Dax god, uh, Tamer uh, Juma is. And I apologize if I'm butchering your name, Tamer. Um, but um, who came up with the uh, the solution to this? And so, if you're so first off, if you're not familiar with No Calculate, um, so no calculate is kind of a, uh, I guess I, I'm partly responsible for no calculate. I've been it's a technique I've been using for many many years, um, and kind of uh, presented a uh, a uh, presentation presentation called DAX counterculture to enterprise DNA. Uh, Brian Julius kind of you know jumped on it and uh, you know kind of is really kind of mark you know marketed it as no calculate I guess. Uh, anyway, it became a thing. And basically, the concept behind no calculate, it's my opinion that calculate uh, is that the, the DAX community is overly fixated on uh, the calculate function um, and that it really poses a problem, in my opinion, in terms of a barrier to entry for people new to DAX because, you know, DAX is e easy. Uh, calculate makes DAX hard. Um, it just, you know, it almost requires a star schema, you know, very good practices, but stuff people coming from Excel probably aren't familiar with. It just completely takes the barrier entry for Power BI and DAX from here and just elevates it exponentially. And so if you're not familiar with no calculate, that's in, in a sense, in a, in a, in essence, it's creating, you know, creating DAX measures and calculations without using an explicit calculate function within the, uh, the formula. Um, and if you're not familiar with no calculate, then shame on you. You haven't been following my channel. <laughs> All right. So now yeah, I have. So why do I think this about no calculate? Well, to me, it kind of strikes me as uh, sort of like Sherlock Holmes, right? When Watson explains the heliocentric nature of the solar system to Sherlock Holmes, and Sherlock Holmes listens intently, and he says, you know, oh, that's you know very interesting information. I'll endeavor my best to forget it, right? Because the Sherlock Holmes, it provided no practical benefit or, or use uh, with what he was trying to do. And I kind of see calculate in the same kind of sense uh, within DAX, right? It's it's kind of similar to like, well, you know, computers operate, most computers operate in binary, right? Ones and zeros, on, off, zero volts, five volts, right? Useful information, I guess. Um, but, you know, do you want to, are you supposed to program in ones and zeros then? Um no, I mean, you know, I mean, I guess some, you know, moron could say, you know, well, you not don't really know, you know, computer programming unless you're programming ones and zeros, right? Well, I should state that differently. You know, only a moron would would say you're only programming, you're really programming if you're programming in ones and zeros, right? Yes, that calculate is fundamental to how DAX operates, but should you really be using it in your in explicitly in your measures? Like, I don't believe you should, uh, especially not for beginners. Uh, and business users, right? Just overly complicate things. You're going to get weird results. There's too many uh, gotchas with that function uh, all in all. It's just super complicated. It's better, in my opinion, it's kind of like the reverse of children. It's 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 better heard, not seen, <laughs> as you could say. Um, so anyway, so that's, that's basically no calculator. And so there have been a lot of detractors around the no calculator approach. Um, I, I wouldn't count Alexis Olson as one of them. Um, but he kind of takes a little, you know, more of a, I guess, I don't know. Um, he seems more open-minded, uh, but he does post these challenges. The first one he posted, no calculate, uh, Tamer Juma, again, came up with a solution for it. Um, and, you know, these are, you know, they're basically challenges designed specifically to um, create a scenario where, you know, you have to use calculate is the concept, right? The first one was an inactive relationship, which was pretty easy to solve. Um, overall, this one, however, was was way, way more challenging. And this one basically says that uh, essentially, and I'll get into the data model, but basically um, it involves, you're trying to create a benchmark for North American store sales. And you're trying to compare that with uh, store, sa store sales from like Europe. And you want to be able to do bring in any dimension that you want to. And we're using the Contoso database here. Again, I'll get into it, but basically it's, you know, they're here he provides, you know, the uh, Contoso PBIX file, and he has the, here's the benchmark sales ratio, the measure, and then he provides an example, like, you know, we have different uh, dimensions here, like channel name, class name, continent name, and, you know, you basically want to compare this to a benchmark of North American stores, right? And it, crucially, right, for full credit, the measure should work regardless of what dimensions are used for slicers 
and what dimensions are used for rows and columns in the matrix. It should e still work even if new dimensions are added to the data model. So this is the tricky part, right? The rest of it, you know, it's pretty straightforward other than this. Um, so this thing is out there since April. And as you can tell from my background, I'm back from Anaheim, uh, California, back from VidCon, uh, just, you know, for a day or so before we, uh, you know, we leave to go down to Universal Studios. Um, and so this thing's been around for about two and a half months, and I think pretty much everybody had given up on it. Like I, I and I'll show you some of my stuff that I, machinations that I went through to try to solve this. Um, but Tamer Juma um, came up with the solution and got accepted by Alexis. So let's get into it in terms of what's how this thing is laid out. So let's bring this up here. So here is Guntoso, right? You got uh, a lot of different dimensions here, date, table, channel, geography, product, product category, product subcategory, promotion, right? You have your stores table, and this is your main fact table, your sales table. So it's laid out kind of like this. And maybe we can dial it back here. So as you can see, well, Get rid of this go away so here we go um yeah so here's your main fact table right here and get your product and product subcategory product category so you got a nice snowflake schema here promotion channel calendar then you have the stores and then you have this geography is related to stores then that gets related to sales that's pretty important in terms of how this is laid out because it creates some problems um although you know again <laughs> to Mayor Juma, um, once you once you provide the solution, it, it all seems rather obvious. Um, but it's a brilliant uh, solution, and kind of what I would say it would be, uh, I don't know, non traditional use of a couple functions like cross filter and tree tabs. But again, here we have the benchmark ratio. So here's what's going on here. So we have this being used in this table here, which includes like brand name. We also have this class name, which is coming from our product table i believe yep brand name no nope. brand name's coming from there sales why don't i see chan oh because i don't have this selected you idiot greg there we go uh coming yeah class name is coming from the product table okay so you need to preserve these diff various different slicers but you basically want to wipe out this continent name and this channel name and only have north american store as your comparison so that's what's going on here in this part right here, right? And to do that, right, you're using calculate to override the filter context, right? So you bring all geography and then you filter it back down to geography continent name is North America and channels store. And then you basically take your sales amount, which is just the sum of the sales amount column. Um, you take that measure and you divide it by that benchmark sales, right? So no matter what you're selecting in terms of your date, or your channel or, you know, or your class, you know, or your promotion or your category, right? It's always gonna compare that those same filters, you know, the same promotion, the same subcategory, the same category, the same class name with, you know, North American store in store, right? That's the concept here. Hopefully I explained that okay. Um, all right, so the, so the issue is it creates some problems and I'll show you like what I, well, let me show you the solution. Solution is, uh, that Tamer came up with is essentially you take all selected um, region country, and I'll get into this a little bit, but the, here's the important part, right? This cross join where you say cross join treat as North America geography continent name, treat as store channel channel name, and then you sum X the measure sales amount, and then that becomes your benchmark sales, and then you divide by you divide your sales amount measure by the benchmark sales. Okay, so and I'll get into how this works, but uh, I. I spent some time on this uh, back a couple months ago. Uh, I tried a bunch of different machinations around this. So here was the original one that I came up with, which was didn't meet the criteria because it didn't account for the different promotions, right? You couldn't add another or different dimensions. You couldn't add another dimension to this, um, that sort of thing. Um, and so that created problems, right? It solved it. It came back with the same results. Um, but if I added a different dimension to this, then that would be a problem, blah, blah, blah. So I created a, a bunch of different ones. You know, the, the cheat, right? Use calculate table instead of calculate. Um, it's not quite there either. Uh, I tried various different uh, things like using related. I tried, here's a bunch of different examples where I was trying to, I used cross join, which I was on the right path with cross join, 
uh, just didn't quite get there uh, with the treat and combining cross joining with treat ads. That's the the brilliance of Tamer's solution. Uh, again, here's some more. Tried doing you know all these different all these different approaches, right? Um, and they wouldn't you know I couldn't get it to work, and so kind of kind of like all right, they got they got us on that one. Um, no, you know, and they're always trying to the calculate guys. They're always trying to come up with you know oh gotchas on you know the no calculate approach. Um, but you know so far we've been able to solve I believe all of them thus far uh, where we don't have to use an explicit calculate. So how does this work exactly? So cross join treat as North America geography continent name, treat as store channel channel name, sales amount, right? So I created this table to kind of show how this is how this is working. So if I just use an add columns and then cross join with that treat as and then sales amount, right? And I go to table one. So you can see here, I get North America store, and then I get this 3 million, blah, 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 0.937, right? And that corresponds with this, right? If I have my slicers here, these are disconnected slicers, store, North America, there's that same total, right? So that's what's being returned. But crucially, within the context of this table visual, it doesn't, it, it includes, it'll include the brand name, it'll include the class name, because I'm not overriding those. I think that's where I got myself into trouble uh, when I was doing mine. And, you know, I always come at it this, this with the the concept of, okay, first create a solution and then improve upon that. But I think I got myself in trouble with this because I was like, I'm thinking, oh, I got to, I got to. I have to take into account all these different dimensions like product key and date key and promotion key and all these different things, right? Um, and really to solve this, you have to kind of flip your thinking and say, no, really, I just need to calculate, you know, North America store and leave all the filters in place um, just as is, as filter context, right? So so that's what Tamer did um, in, in this solution right here, right? And he created, he creates this, and the key, the key to this is this treat as, right? And the cross join just basically takes, you know, two different tables and in and combines them and kind of in the Cartesian product. So, oh, let's take a look at it. Uh, cross join, cross join function returns a table that contains the Cartesian product of all rows, right, from all tables in the arguments, right? But the treat as function applies the result of the table expression as filters to columns from an unrelated table, which you're thinking, okay, but they're related, Greg, in the, in the model. Yeah, but, you know, as my dad always, always liked to say, you know, it's okay to lie to women and it's okay to lie to Power BI, right? <laughs> he never said that. <laughs> All right. So, um, so we're basically lying to, to Power BI. We're just saying, oh, yeah, give me, give me a treat as, you know, in terms of geography and store. And then we're cross-joining them. So we're treating like they're completely unrelated. But the crucial component is treat as, and I'll show you why. Show you why. Um, so if you just take like a data table, right? And I say continent name and, cha and channel name, and I give it North American store, and then I add my columns and my sales mount, right? I get this number, eight. I get the total sum from the entire table, right? Not just North American store. So this is not the same as using treat as. So treat as actually in the context of the calculation is saying, oh, I'm, you know, I'm actually treating North America as, you know, a filter for the North America column in, or the continent name um, and filtering it to North America. And I'm treating from my geography table and I'm actually treating my, in my channel name from the store table, right? Um, so that's what is really going on here. That's why this works and why this would not work, right? So really cool solution, comes up with the same exact uh, uh, results. Now, one improvement, again, going back to, hey, so make, once you create a solution, then you can always improve upon it. Um, and I'm interested to see what Tamer's take on this um, is. But in his original solution, he had this all, he had this SumX all selected region country name, and then the SumX. I couldn't figure out why this was here exactly, and I may be missing something. So I created this benchmark ratio three, where I got rid of that. Um, and I just do a sum X of the cross join where I treat as, right? And then the ratio. And it seems like, and I use that one up here, and it seems like it all works. Maybe I'm missing a boundary case um, that the uh, this other one solves. Um, but it does provide, actually, at least in my testing, it provided a, a slightly better performance, actually, even, be even better than uh, Calculate. So if I do start recording here and I refresh the visuals, 
right? And then I look at the DAX, 37, 33. Of course, it, of course it's not going to work now that I'm testing it. And in all my other cases, it actually came back faster. 25, 25, 27, 22, 19, 18, ah, whatever. In my, in my examples, in my, when I was doing testing earlier, I was coming back with like 14 second, 14 millisecond times for the DAX query, and it seemed to be lower. But basically, if what I can tell here is that uh, in my testing earlier and in this testing, it's pretty much the same um, is what I'm going to get. I mean, we're then a couple milliseconds, right? So no big deal. All right. So, I mean, I really think that this is a cool solution. Um, and kind of a non-traditional use of cross filter and tree tabs. And it's not that I'm saying, you know, I have a lot of weird notions, right, about DAX. Um, and, and, you know, if you uh, I have an actual uh, playlist on here called DAX Counterculture, uh, if you want to learn more about like no calculate and some of my weird theories on DAX, like, you know, you shouldn't be using value. And yes, and there was a LinkedIn article. It's like, well, you know, in this case where you have a path and it's all text, you know, then value comes in handy, even though. I personally would just use a plus zero um, instead of value um, because that leverages DAX formula engine, which is faster than DAX's function engine. And I learned that from being the technical editor on this book, Extreme DAX by Michelle Razama and Hank uh, Blute, um, Blutman. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm probably butchering those names as well. Um, but yeah, if you haven't uh, picked up this book, this is a great book, and I'm not saying that. It's not same as sh same shameless self-promotion. Um, I was the technical editor for, for this book, um, but it, it doesn't mean I get any royalties off of it. So, so highly recommend this book um, uh, because, you know, they talk about the formula engine versus the function engine, and they also even argue that calculate is the most important function in DAX, um, which I happen to agree with, right? That's what makes DAX work under the hood. It's just should stay under the hood in my opinion but uh yeah so that's all for this video hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you next time tamer you're a genius